Former Defense Minister Moshe, I don't thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So the Israeli president uh, has arrived in Israel, uh, which is a big thing, his first visit to Israel since he became president. What Israel should expect from such a visit? Uh, president Biden's visit is very important. Uh, as I believe, the Middle East is still uh, in a volatile situation in which the American input is very important. Whether the new approach to Saudi Arabia and of course the entire region. Uh, and on top of it is the uh, policy uh, regarding the Iranian threat. Iran has become to be the main generator and instigator for instability in the region. And the American administration policy strategy is extremely important. Before we touch those two issues, the, the, the arena in which Israel is getting closer and closer to the Arab nations and the Iranian issue, let's speak about the Americans in the area. The Americans have been leaving the Middle East for quite a few years and currently they are being dragged back in because of oil. If you don't deal with the challenges of the Middle East, you might face it in 9-11 uh, as an example or being driven to come back to deal with Islamic State, as it happened. So there is no uh, way to avoid the challenges of the Middle East. And the question is, what should be done? Now, what we face now in the Middle East, three Islamic movements claiming for hegemony. On top of it, Iran with the Shia uh, idea of uh, exporting the revolution, being involved in uh, Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen and beyond. We have the jihadists, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Daesh, as we call it in the region, and the Muslim Brotherhood movement as well. Now, we need a clear uh, strategy uh, generating by uh, the US administration to put things in the very right context. And uh, at the end, if you withdraw from the Middle East, the Middle East will pursue you everywhere. So we expect a very clear post policy and strategy on behalf of the president to put things on the right direction. But do you see the, the Americans more involved in the area than they have been in the past few years? Maybe because of, as I said, the oil prices, the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, their need for the Arab states to be more involved to produce more oil, as we see in Biden's visit in Saudi Arabia. This is one of the reasons of the new uh, U.S. administration approach to Saudi Arabia, especially, and the Gulf states, the need for oil. Uh, but it's not enough. I believe that the uh, U.S. policy should have been a very clear policy in which the Iranian regime should be stopped. It is not just the nuclear project, which is very important. It's a proliferation of arms and terror everywhere. Uh, abducting Lebanon as an example. A decision to wage a war against uh, Israel from Lebanon is not going to be made in Beirut. It's going to be made in, in, in Tehran. The Houthis in Yemen as an example, threatening the Gulf states as well as American interest, other American interest uh, in the region. Uh, the situation in Iraq, the uh, situation in Syria. We don't want to see uh, Iranian-dominated Syria. So uh, there is a need to put the Iranian uh, Revolutionary uh, Guard as well as the Iranian uh, regime uh, in a very clear dilemma, whether to go on with the rogue activities or to survive as the regime. But maybe, uh, Moshe Alon, what we will do that is President Putin's visit to Tehran, which is expected next week, uh, which will show who is on, who's on which side. If you to be simplistic, who is on the good side, who is the evil. And nowadays, the, the cooperation between Iran and Russia, as an example, is very clear. We are, we are on the good side, we are on the evil. Uh, and this is the case, of course, everywhere. What should be done in Syria? What should be done in, in Iraq? What should be done in Yemen? What should be done with uh, threats around us? Hezbollah in Lebanon or Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad? What, what? supported and facilitated by the Iranian regime. So there is an opportunity to come out with a clear strategy to stop Iran. 
But what should Israel ask from the president? Because everything has been asked in the past few months vis-a-vis -vis the possible uh, 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 renewal of the JCPOA. So the Americans have heard it all, and still Israel didn't persuade them. First of all, we have to remind that uh, the relationship between the United States and the State of Israel for the Israeli side is a cornerstone of our national security. And there is very good coordination, let's put it this way, between the two sides defense establishments. Unbelievable, I would say it. Uh, but when it comes to the closed doors uh, discussions about what should be done, there are differences. And I hope that uh, this visit will be used to be more on the same page on certain issues. As why well, we believe that we live in this tough, tough neighborhood. We know the challenges. We believe that we know what should be done. First of all, in order to stop Iran, we should demonstrate determination. This is not the case. Neither in the time of Obama nor in the time of Trump. Uh, not to react, not to respond to the interception of uh, uh, intelligence unmanned air vehicle, US unmanned air vehicle, was a mistake to my mind. Not to respond to uh, Iranian made uh, uh, missiles, ground to sea missiles, uh, operated by the Houthis in Yemen, targeting three times. USS Mason, American figure. Not to respond, this is a mistake. Uh, in the Middle East, you can't survive without holding a very big stick and uh, use it when it is needed. So there is a lot to be discussed between the Israeli Prime Minister and the American President in order to have better coordination about what should be done.